Hello and welcome once again. Nigeria's main opposition political party, the People's Democratic Party, in the week held its much talked about National Executive Committee meeting. At the end of the meeting, former President of the Senate, Bukola Saraki, was appointed to lead new reconciliatory efforts in the party, while the former governor of Akwai Bom State, Imanal Odom, heads the disciplinary committee. Ahead of the meeting, the expectation in some quarters was that the issue of alleged anti-party activities would top the agenda with appropriate sanctions meted out. That did not happen. Instead, the PDP maintained a philosophical silence on the matter. The PDP has been battling with deep-seated internal crisis, a clear fallout of events including serial anti-party activities that led to the party's defeat in the last general election with former governor of Rivers Denia Sonwike and his group of G5 governors openly working against the victory of the party's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. The much-anticipated hammer did not fall on Wike and others. Instead, NEC appointed a former governor of Akwai Bom State, Udom Emmanuel, as chairman of the disciplinary committee. The NEC meeting also glossed over the issue of the fate of the current acting national chairman of the party, Omar Damagum, postponing the matter and leaving Damagum to survive three months more till the next NEC meeting scheduled for the 15th of August. My chairman. Well, to help us make sense of all that played out before, during and after the PDP neck missing, we have joining us in the studio the National Public Secretary of the Party, Debo Oluguawa. He's also a former member of the House of representative, in other words, a former lawmaker. Glad to have you join me uh, this evening on this week. Thank you very much, uh, Ndi. Nice to be here. Yeah. You're looking sharp. Interesting. Trying, nice. to, be like, trying to be like you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, Damagum uh, stays till August the 15th. Uh, the PDP, the talk is that Wiki One Atiku says uh, power is from God. A PDP member also says Atiku never did the needful by presenting uh, their case in writing to the NEC, the caucus, and then the governors, that all the noise about having someone else from the North Central to occupy the position of El Damagum was only a hype in the, in the media. Was that why he lost? Give us... Thank you very much, Nili, and uh, good evening, Nigerians. Again, I mean, I'm a little bit heard about why the world lost. First of all, before I continue, I think I need to make a clarification from your uh, background statements. Governor Udom Emmanuel, the former governor of Akwai Bom State, is, was not elected or appointed to be the chairman of the district committee. He is to head the amendment of the constitution and review committee. He's been there, it was just extended. So I think we need to make that clarification. What we agreed at the NEC was a reconstitution of the disciplinary committee, the reconstitution of the reconciliation, reconciliation committee. <clears throat> yes. These committees had always been there. But we recognized the need to regeed them because some members of the committee had left the party some had died, and in the spirit of the PDP to have a kind of holistic approach to our own internal processes, the neck in this wisdom, the constituted that committee. We recognize that as an organic party that is dynamic, and there are suggestions because of new things happening, we extended the tenure of the Constitution Amendment and Review Committee, which was previously headed by former Governor Udom Emmanuel. So I think we should put that in perspective. But in your question, you talk about lost and win. What happened after the neck was that the PDP won. Democracy won. You see, this is the understanding of what PDP is. PDP is such a democratic party that recognizes the fact that there will be differences in a political party, 
because the party is, com is comprised of people with different backgrounds, with different interests, competing interests. And then when you have those issues, your capacity as a party to find a mid-course makes you a political party. PDP is 25 years old. And one lesson from that neck was that everybody that mattered in this party, all the leaders of the party, came together and it speaks to one question, that this is a steady party. And that was demonstrated in our 18 years in the governance of this country. We had a stable economy that was progressing, that became the number one destination point for foreign investment at the time. We had a stable government that was able to take Nigeria out of debt. We had a stable country where there was liberalization and capital inflow. We had a stable government that had capacity where the, the stock market was growing. We had a government then when Nigerians became the richest man in Africa. And so these are all what PDP is made of. And it is because it is democratic, recognizes the fact that it has processes, it has programs, it has organs that at the appropriate time will kick in. So what we found there was the joker of the PDP. And that's why Nigerians continue to expect that PDP will do and put its act together so that we can come back to governance and begin to enjoy those period where it was the golden era of Nigeria in terms of development of a capital, in terms of human capital development, in terms of improvement, and of course, how the, Niger the world viewed Nigeria. Okay. You saw those people that are in that meeting. Oh, and that says the one thing. The capacity of people that are diametrically opposing on issues, the capacity to come together under one umbrella, and they can see speak with one voice, to say, yes, you know, this is not about me, not about my interests, it's about the party, and more importantly about Nigeria. And again, arising from that is the fact that this democracy must not fail. And it takes a strong institution like the PDP to ensure that we have what is democratic in nature, and then Nigerians can begin to say, indeed, we have political party. Let me put this quickly before you go on. There are lessons from what happened with the NEC. The two other political parties, the APC and Labour Party, has a lesson to learn from this. We are all witnesses to what the Labour Party is going through. Uh, the euphoria seems to be gone. And now, the ability to manage interests and people became difficult. So that shows you that even if that we can then transmit that into managing a country. Then for the APC, people, someone said to me, oh, they, they are stable. Yes. On the face of it, it looks like they are stable. The peace you find in the APC is the peace of the graveyard. We are democratic. We want all the interests to come. We want to compete with ideas under an environment that is peaceful. In PDP, we don't react. We respond. All right, fine. I, I, I'll, I'll put this question to you because you talked about you know, having left the country and all the dividends of democracy and all that. Now, it takes opposition, you and I know, yeah. for example, in a race, it takes one mm -hmm. to really push you to break records. Correct. Uh, and because of that, uh, when a PDP is divided, maybe because you've been in power so long, the party doesn't know how to play the opposition. Why I'm saying this is because of many things. You know the story of the G5. Correct. Uh, we, one of you is, is in the APC government touting the, 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 the uh, program of APC. He came for the meeting. Now listen to what a G60 lawmaker said, Ugo Chinere. He said, we said to the last uh, minute plan to ship today's expected step down, that was before the meeting of Omar Damagum as acting national chairman, is a last-minute plan by the all-progressive Congress loyalists in the PDP backing him up to give them room to use the extension period to inflict irreversible damage on the PDP by filling the over 19 PDP state executives with pro-APC members as state 
party officials, G60 lawmakers. He also <coughs> accused the leaders and the governors of allowing Wike, who is not a member of the caucus, to sit in their meeting. Okay, you see, for me, I'm not going to sit down here and begin to respond to some insinuation by some people that have their own agendas, which I don't want to join issue with. I'm here to speak for the party, to speak on the processes that took place in the management of the party. First of all, let me correct this. There's no G60 anywhere. The leadership of the House of Representatives caucus gave us that indication, and I can quote the leader, the minority leader of the House, having said that to the end of this. So there's no G60 anywhere. However, if someone is, is in the PDP and is privy to the conversation in APC and then come with those information, if indeed he said that, then again we, we worry. But that is only one for us to worry as a party. We are interested in ensuring that we keep our party so that we can serve the Nigerian people by providing a position that will put the government in the right position. And, and, that, and that's why I talked about and then, the fact and then, that, that, that are you people, because you've stayed that's so long gonna, in power, no, 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 that's you don't I, seem to know how to play the opposition. Indeed. That's which why, gives APC a free reign. No, it, obviously, you are not following us well. Look, we are all Nigerians. And what we expect, whether in one political party or the other, is that we should hope and support any government to succeed. Why? It is not enough to just carry placards and be on the street as opposition. When we give our position on issues, we prefer a solution that the APC is deaf to those suggestions does not mean that we're not saying it. It is painful that this is the way we find ourselves as a nation. That in the last eight years, or nine years now, APC consistently became deaf to our advice. I'll give an example on the issue of petroleum subsidy, which is key to why we are in this challenge that we're going to right now. Now, we're saying if you must remove that subsidy, there must be a plan of action. There must be a conversation. There must be a discussion. When you decide, ill advice, ill thought out program, and you just throw it at the people, and you find this run, run over effect. How do you do that? Nigeria has four refineries. And we, we gave him this as an advice. It's not enough to say, oh, you're not doing well. We should say, look, do it differently. D don't forget that PDP was in power with the four refineries, and not, not one was built. I mean, no, don't forget, forget that. that. Excuse me. If you don't want the heat, don't go near the kitchen. That's true. The APC said, we know it. Buhari came. I will build one refinery in every four years. When he got there, he abandoned everything. And what did you find? He said there was no payment of a subsidy. He came in and quadrupled it. We are all here. Now, the new APC government of President Tinubu said, don't worry, we will do that. We're saying, yes, we agree on the principle that over time, but don't do that without a shock absorber. Now, we all feel it. The good thing is that hunger, insecurity, cluelessness, does not know party, doesn't know tribe. Doesn't know brother. Doesn't know brother. Sister. Doesn't know religion. And that's why we find today more Nigerians are below poverty line today. This is the legacy of the APC. Compare it to when PDP was there. We're the first destination capital in terms of investment in the world. Life expectancy was improving. Capacity for you to grow and have what I call the opportunity to pursue happiness were available. Now, today, contrast that. We are now the poverty capital of the, of the world. That is sickening. That should concern Nigeria. For us, we have a duty. We have a duty to provide opposition, but with concrete suggestions, which we did. And I go back to the issue of petroleum subsidy, which is the core of this challenge. When the government Right on the paragraph, and now subsidy is gone. It looks like a fiat. But you have assembly, you have governor's forum, you have national economic council, a council of state meeting. 
There was no consideration of that. And then you, you drop the bomb. And what do we have? Rent, house, house, house rent, uh, purchasing power, inability of parents to send their kids to school. Food prices. I mean, food prices, transportation. All these had a cascading effect in the life of the people. When a government wants to do a policy that is so all-embracing, it makes sense to first of all have a conversation. Okay. They yeah. didn't have that. They never interested. They did that for eight <coughs> years under President Buhari, and they continue that. I was saying this is the wrong way. We are in this country. When the APC said to us that they intervene on their Greek sector, and there's so much money, anchor borrowing program, there is so much money for the, and they are producing so much rice that it deceived this country by creating what we call. Uh, pyramid of rice that turned out to be pyramid of lies. All right, I don't know whether you can take this on the two minutes. Yes, Deputy National Chairman South, Arapaja, correct. Dino Melai yes. uh, said before the neck that for anti party activities, all will be sanctioned, all those who engaged in anti party activities. Yes. But the party was mom, and it was clear to everyone in Nigeria in the, in that the some people engaged in anti-party activities, See? and they're still in the party, and nothing has been done to them. I can call names. One major name is Wiki, who is a minister oh, yes. in, in, in APC's government. Yeah. So, indeed, let me say this. Can we for a second just take a bit rest and stop this uh, fixation? on individuals or persons. Look, I will emphasize this. PDP is a party of process, of rule of law, of procedure. You just, if you are accused, just like in regular, because I'm a lawyer, you are accused. It is called allegation. Yeah. Then you need to prove it. The fact that somebody becomes very emotional about a particular situation, cannot distract from the fact that there must be a process. So what we have done is to say there's a disciplinary committee set up, which is a process provided for in the Constitution. Then the so-called, I use the word advisedly, mm -hmm. they don't just happen in the, at the national. It happens in every part, and the allegation that they need to be investigated through a process where you can allow people to make a representation, rule of law, right to fair hearing. And then when you have that, you can make a report. All right. That is what is called a political party. Okay, so you're saying When you don't do a mob action. So, you, so, so you're saying that investigations are going on? It must go on. That's our process. That is why we're a political party. Uh, has, it start, has it started? We're reconstituting those committees right. and those processes will go on. And right. the Nigerian people who are interested in what PDP can do right. and what is done from this record would just give that party a chance. That we're a party of process or procedure of law and constitution. And that's what we're doing. Party that will of process, procedure, and constitution. Thank you so much, Debo, Debo uh, Olokuaba, for being on this week.